if you're buying a home in Florida, there might be some problems that you're not aware of. And you might have some questions that you're worried about that you don't know how to get the answers to. And we're gonna answer those questions. And solve those problems for you. And we're getting started right now. So these are just notes that I jotted down based on working with a lot of buyers. By the way, we've helped a lot of people move to the Venice, Sarasota, Northport, Welland Park, Inglewood areas. If you do want to buy or sell a home in the area and you want to support the channel, calling or texting or emailing our team is a great way to do so. And that number is 941-221-1897. But if you're looking to buy or sell anywhere else in the country, make sure to click the link in the description box below and we'll put you in contact with a better realtor in your area. And that does not cost you anything extra, but again, it's a great way to support the channel. So one of the first questions is, you know, being able to have an understanding before you buy a home, what you're going to be paying in insurance and in taxes. Cause some people, you know, be like, well, I don't want to buy this home and, you know, think, okay, this is going to be my mortgage, but I don't know what that's going to be. Cause if that puts me out of my budget, not now what am I going to do? I'm stuck with this home and all this extra payments that I can't handle. So what's the solution there, Haiti? So for insurance, what you can do is just get a couple quotes. Um, you can do this online or call some of the agents in the area and they'll be able to give you a quote of what that amount would be for the specific home you're interested in. But a good estimate for homeowners insurance for the year, it's about 2,000, 2,500 a year and upwards. And that's going to depend on the home, the roof age, the windows, if you do have hurricane impact windows or hurricane shutters. So there's a lot that goes into that number, but but roughly 2,500 and upwards. Yeah, and the county too. You know, if you're a little bit more inland, like say Ocala County and something, it's probably gonna be less than that, you know what I mean? So you wanna keep that in mind. And if you go further south to like Miami area, that's probably gonna be a little bit higher. So it just depends on a lot of different factors. And as far as taxes goes, that really depends on what the home is valued at. But a good number to go off of is 0.98% to 1% of the sales price. This is not going to be your final tax amount, but it will give you a ballpark idea of how much to expect to pay in taxes. Again, this will depend on what the house is actually valued at. Next problem that we've seen happen a few times in our personal experience is someone goes and they buy a home with a new construction community or just a new construction home in general, and they just go directly to the builder. They get into the building process and they're having a problem with maybe something taking too long or something not looking the way they want to or they want to try to get out of the contract in one way shape or form and then they get a hold of our team and say well, i've been watching all your videos i've been funding them so helpful and it seems like you know you, what's going on you've helped a lot of people move the area so i know you know you can help me in this situation and we can't and it stinks to say that we can't because we would like to because once you're under contract our team cannot get involved with the process legally Yes, and a lot of people think that going directly to the builder, they will save all this money. And the unfortunate truth is, I mean, I would be more than excited if you could get a better deal because you went directly to the builder and you don't need me for anything. But the unfortunate reality is that those numbers are already included in the sale price. So whether you go unrepresented or you do call a realtor, that number is not going to change. And in most cases, the realtor is actually going to be able to get you a better deal than you would yourself. Because just keep in mind that the sales agent at the sales office, they're representing the builder. They want what's best for the builder because they're that's their employer. Yeah. For us, the realtors, we're representing you. We're representing the buyer. So we want what's best for you. And we are going to be the ones talking to the sales agent and be like, well, this is what we want and, you know, come up with an offer that works for everyone. So going unrepresented, if you want to do it, that's fine. If you think you're getting a good deal, that's fine. But it is very unlikely that the seller's agent is giving you the best deal possible even if they're telling you they are. And also some other things to consider is if you do run into those issues, it's good to have the realtor to you know help you out through those because they understand the law, the legality, all those things, and you know can be that nice person to kind of help get you what you want out of the situation and, and do so you know in the best possible way because they understand the law. But on top of that, help prevent maybe some of those issues because they're gonna be looking at the house throughout the process. If they're a good realtor, you know, coming and checking in, sending you videos, talking to the builder, as that home is being built, especially if you're from out of state, you know, which a lot of yeah. people that buy a new construction home in Florida are, you know, they're, they go under contract and they're just waiting for the home to be finished and then they come move, you know, move down. So to have someone here that's continually keeping an eye on the situation is really, really invaluable and can help you prevent a lot of those issues. And also just 
before you even sign because once you sign that contract and this is a lot of pages that you are going to be signing once you sign those contracts there is nothing you can do to like potentially get out of the contract or try to renegotiate or anything like that once you sign that contract the builder is going to hold you accountable for whatever it is that you signed so having a realtor that understands the process and what's best for you before you even sign it's really the way to go because you don't want to go in and maybe you don't understand a certain wording in the contract or you're just way too excited right because yeah. it's you know, you're buying your dream home in Florida and then you forget to read the small print. <laughs> Next big question slash problem that we get from a lot of people is the cost of insurance, which we kind of went over a little bit and just the ability to get it. One thing I wanted to mention on that note that we didn't before though is just shopping around to different you know companies to see if you can get a better rate especially like if you've been with a company like two or three years if you've been living in florida for a little while a lot of times they'll keep creaking that yeah. rate up year by year and maybe go back and shop around you might be able to save yourself like for us we shopped around after we got reassigned because our insurance policy got bought out by another company and I think we saved ourselves like $2,000 a year just by looking for different options out there. As far as the ability to get homeowners insurance in Florida, yes, it is possible. There are many factors that go into it though, such as the location of the home, the age of the roof, do you have hurricane shutters or hurricane impact windows? How old are your windows? How old is the actual home and the location? Are you on a flood zone or are you out of the flood zone? Yeah, the, one of the biggest ones right now that we're seeing with insurance companies saying, hey, no, we can't insure you is if the roof is 15 years old or older, which in that case, if you got a new roof put on, which is a big expense, so it's something you want to be aware of. But, you know, if you get a new roof put on, then they'll cover you. And outside of that, you know, the other question we get sometimes from people as far as being able to get insurance is all the companies, they're all leaving Florida. And we hear this a lot, you know, on YouTube videos and the media and things like that. And like w when we recently got quotes for our home to get insured like there's a lot of companies and there's a lot of options and obviously different price points for those different options but it's not like there's no one out there that you can't get insurance for anymore i know a lot of companies did leave because of different you know legal issues with lawyers and litigation and fraudulent claims and of course all the different storms that happened you know up to about hurricane ian but it's not like everybody left yes. at that point. And there are now new companies coming in because of changes in legislation and things like that to avoid some of those same issues. Another question we hear a lot is, what's the market like? Is it a buyer's market? Is it a seller's market? Is it the right time to buy right now? Well, that really depends. Is it the right time for you to buy it right now? Like, do you need a home? Do you, are you tired of paying rent and paying your landlord's mortgage? It's really, depending on your situation, but typically a buyer's market is when we do have a lot of inventory. So at least, three to six months, it's a balanced market, six months and over, that is a, a buyer's market. And a seller's market is when we don't have enough inventory and homes are flying off the market, like the day they go live, they're basically sold. But right now in Florida, we are in a very interesting market. It's the only way we can really call yeah. it. There are homes that do sit on the market over a hundred days. You know, which is great if you're a buyer and you're trying to get a deal, but there are homes that a hundred days on the market and then they sell the next day and you know, you go and look at it and you think you have time and you know, trying to make up your mind, which is it has happened with some buyers of ours where they're thinking the situation, trying to see if they're going to put in an offer and then the house sells. Even at a hundred days, you're not, you know, guaranteed that that house will be there for two, three days while you think it over. The other thing is too, even though we do have homes that sit on the market over a hundred days, we also have homes that hit the market and they're sold. Like yeah. they have multiple offer situations and day one or day two, they are sold. So it just really depends on the area, even within the same cities. And we actually have another YouTube channel where we basically just go all around Florida and we do home tours and we give market updates for all those. And I'm usually the one giving the data for the market updates and it's really specific to not even with like if you're talking like a bigger metropolitan area like Orlando we've done different suburbs within that and it can vary differently from one suburb to another as far as you know the average sale to list ratio that months of supply in the inventory yeah uh, within a city obviously from city to city you know we've seen it be a buyer's market in some parts of Florida and a seller's market in others and balanced in others so Again, that's why it's really good to have a realtor that knows the area that you're looking for, you know, and they can kind of give you an idea of, okay, maybe you're looking for this pocket in this city versus this pocket in this city, or, you know, comparing two different cities entirely 
and that way you can kind of know okay i have time maybe or i can maybe have a few more to pick from or i need to get on this place now because it looks great and things are flying here so you want to make sure you have an understanding of that so long story short the market in florida is tricky <laughs> and you might see a lot of these doom and gloom videos right now saying it you know inventory is exploding and usually when they're talking about that they're picking out these little pockets to validate that point and just extrapolating that across of all of florida when that's not necessarily the case another question we get a lot is what's the hurricane and flood risk well we are in florida we do get storms we do get hurricanes and we do get flooding unfortunately but you can mitigate those things by knowing where you're going to purchase your property so being out of the flood zone if you you know if you want to be protected from flooding Hurricanes, having hurricane shutters or having um, hurricane impact windows is a great way to mitigate potential issues with a hurricane. And also keeping an eye on your roof, having a, a roof that's 15 years or newer. If your roof is 15 years or older, the insurance company won't insure you anyway, or the premium will be through the roof, <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> Some other big things to consider are number one, back to the people you know seeing one thing and then extrapolating that across Florida this happens a lot with hurricanes and flooding so example would be recently there was some flooding in this pocket neighborhood is basically one street a couple streets in Sarasota and it flooded and you I saw a few, few different like news stories about it from like you know channel whatever news and they're saying Sarasota flooding and so if you maybe didn't watch the whole video or maybe sometimes the video didn't cover it well enough you might think oh my gosh all of Sarasota flooded and you know sometimes people will do this with Florida as a whole all of Florida <laughs> flooded which is pretty ridiculous if you think about it but a lot of times that's the way it goes you know it's just gonna be one small area that floods and not the entire area again having a good realtor that knows that area and some of the things to look for and the history of the areas and and you know how things are being built if it's you know got a lot of new construction which a lot of Florida does those things will help quite a bit and then of course location in general as far as like within the state right your flood risk let's say like in claremont you're you're west of orlando which is probably almost smack dab in the middle of the state pretty far north so further south more flood risk to the coast more flood risk and, and hurricane risk of course with you know the wind as well if you are in claremont there is a lot of hills in claremont if you're sitting on top of a hill your flood risk is probably zero I, I would hope so if the house was built correctly and you're in the middle of the state so those are all you know things that are you're gonna have to put into consideration as well you know again putting florida as a whole and saying your flood risk and hurricane risk is the same is probably not the best way of looking at it and even if you're in a higher risk area like you want to be close to the beach but you're also afraid of flooding if your home is elevated and you're in flood zone x that will minimize the flood risk next big question problem it's both really is condos assessments i'm sure you've seen or heard about this if you've been looking into Flo moving to florida anytime soon you know there's been some really big assessments some changes in laws uh with the hoas giving special assessments some as much as six figures and needing that balance due so because of that i think what we'll see is a lot of condo prices dropping but then with that you might have to incur paying that assessment fee or maybe the person living there decides to pay the assessment and then you have to worry if there will be another one which it should be handled because basically they have to have enough reserves it's a whole can of worms if you want us to do a more in-depth video on it with that because it's a very very big topic let us know in the comments and we can talk about it more and on that note hoas that's another question we get a lot people you know afraid almost that the hoa is going to come for their home and get their home because of whatever little issue there's a lot of misinformation i think out there regarding what power the hoa really has and what your duties as a homeowner in an hoa community are um, you do want to follow the rules and regulations and depending on the hoa community you'll get two or three warnings before you actually get a fine when you get the fine if you don't pay that fine that's when the issues come so they would technically be able to go after your home and take, you know, the lien if you do not pay that fine. But I mean, if it's like $100 and you know that you violated a rule, wouldn't you just pay that $100 instead of 
putting your house out there for potentially going to court and all that like it's it's a whole deal but usually if you follow the rules or if you do get a warning and you respond to that warning and fix that issue it, there is nothing to worry about there yeah man just to give you some ideas as far as so like a lot there's a lot of like planned and gated communities throughout florida so where, where it would be a home versus a condo or a townhome there's going to be some very different things such as let's say for example with a condo generally they're going to handle your exterior maintenance you know landscaping all those kinds of things sometimes your water bill will be included and maybe some of your utilities or even cable tv if you're in a condo whereas a home it's generally like occasionally they'll han handle maybe some of the exterior maintenance as far as like landscaping or, or mowing the lawn but just about everything else on the exterior is going to be your responsibility and then with that also comes you know there's a whole bunch of pros and cons such as the restrictions some people like them because it keeps the neighborhood looking nice and a certain way some people don't want those restrictions because they don't want people telling them what to do so those are all things you're going to have to understand and then there's other things with like pets and things like that if you're in a condo versus a uh, gated community is usually going to be pretty open to any kind of pet well anything with you know maybe not like a lion <laughs> but those are things you'll want to be aware of we've done entire videos on this but again if you want a more in-depth video about hoas and you know what to know about them let us know in the comments but again if you're looking to buy or sell a home you know that's something you could ask the realtor you can even look at the hoa docs and, and know what you're getting into yes you'll get the documents before you even submit an offer all the information's out there so usually if you're interested in a home in within the HOA community will send you the documents so you can review them before we go under contract or put an offer in or some people like to review those documents before even going to see the home because if there is something in there that you don't agree with or don't want to do it they just want to skip that home altogether next two big questions and we can answer these pretty quickly electricity costs and you know uh, water costs utility costs so just to give you a ballpark idea at least for where we live in Venice Florida it's a about a hundred bucks a month for each summer the electricity cost does go up quite a bit for a house we, we got like a three two just to give you a sense for the size uh but that in the summer you're getting a little bit closer to that 200 dollars ballpark and costs have gone up recently and now in the winter it's usually a little bit under about a hundred bucks maybe a little ab above a hundred but on average most months you're sitting around 100 125 bucks and then water for us is about a hundred bucks but it's just us two so to give you a ballpark for that there you go um but again you can get an idea of those things before you buy a home if it's somewhere else in florida and you're worried it's gonna be really really different from here and if you don't have city water and have a well then you don't have to worry about those costs but just planning for you know if something goes wrong with the well then fixing it yourself but the cost of having a well it's not as much as having city water but with all this being said there's also going to be a lot of other questions that maybe you know you're not thinking of right now that maybe you get into the home buying process and we're not thinking of because maybe we didn't write it down in a note to do it in this youtube video such as something with the county with your utilities with the builder if you're building a new construction home and a whole bunch more and that's why it's really important again to get in contact with a local realtor that knows your area and we know venice and sarasota really well so if you're looking to buy or sell a home in the area make sure to call text or email our real estate team 941-221-1897 and if you're looking to buy or sell a home anywhere else in florida or the united states for that matter Click the link in the description, answer a few questions. That'll get you connected with a realtor that fits exactly what you're looking for and knows the area you're looking for really, really well. And either calling us or clicking that link and getting a hold of them is a great way to support the channel so we can make videos like this for you. And clicking that link does not cost you anything extra. Hit the like button if you found the video helpful. And if you want to learn more about what's like living in Florida, check out this video right here. And live breezy. breezy.